And my man, what the heck is going on? <laughs> Nothing's going on. It's just, uh, it was just, it was just that time, you know. There's a time in life, everything. It was just time for myself and the Browns to, to split up. You make it back. You go through the examinations from the Browns. You pass. You report yesterday. Everything's great. We featured all the video and your audio uh, yesterday. What happened? I just had ample time to reflect back on uh, how I felt when I first got to Cleveland. And as the day progressed, uh, I just realized that it just wasn't the place for me anymore. And uh, I came home, talked to my mother about it, slept on it, slept like a baby. And uh, I decided that it was time for us to, to move on and, and part ways. And the, the team is, is moving in a tremendous direction, and I'm excited. Excited for the fans, excited for uh, the, the players, and it's going to be great. But unfortunately, it's not, it's not fitting for me. I'm not a part of that. I'm not going to be a part of that. And I wish I could be, but as of now, it's not going to be. Okay, okay. Now... Was there something that was said to you by the Browns organization? Did they say that, uh, um, it, it, I mean, I, I don't understand this. It, uh, well, you know what, here, let me here, let me clarify something for you. You, nor will anyone else, understand how I feel. And I don't expect you to. And I'm the only one that has to live my life. I was the only one that stayed in that Cleveland clinic those 40-plus nights, except my mother. She was there every night. And no one was in Arizona with me but me. And the only thing that got me through this, this experience has been my faith in the Lord, has been my work ethic, and my family. And as far as anyone else goes and opinions and everything else, I apologize if I offended anyone. I apologize. My goal is not to do that. I'm not trying to upset this Browns community, this Ohio State community, this Wildcat community. I'm not trying to do that. But I'm the only one that has to live my life. And I decided that it is best for me not to be in Cleveland as a Cleveland Browns. I'm always going to be a, a Cleveland guy. It's always going to be my home. Nobody's going to run me out of town. But as far as playing for the Cleveland Browns, there were a lot of things that went on that no one will ever know about that's as far as the fans go, nor should they know about because they happened while I was a member of that family. And family members fight. And there were some things that went on that were not atoned, not atoned to and have not been corrected. And I've decided that, you know, with that being the case, there's so much water under the bridge between both parties. There's just a better situation for myself and a better situation for the team for me not to be there. Were you given the impression, let me ask you this, were you given the impression that you wouldn't be seeing much playing time and you feel like you're ready to be the player you were? Well, if I were given that impression, it wouldn't matter because come July 24th, whenever they open up training camp and we put the pads on, that, was gonna, that problem wasn't going to be solved. Because as a football player, I didn't feel that there was anyone in that room that was better than me. Yes, they have good players. But I didn't feel like there was anyone in that room that I couldn't compete with on any level. So as far as, you know, people may want to say, well, he didn't want to compete. He didn't want to do this. No, it's not about that. It's not about that at all. So you went to the Browns and requested the release. Am I right in assuming that? Yes, I did. I spoke with Phil Savage. Uh, we spoke like men. Uh, I explained some things to him. He explained some things to me. We were both able to get some things off of our chest. It was a very uh, light, easy conversation. It wasn't an easy conversation for me. I'm quite sure it wasn't an easy conversation for him. But we both decided that that was what was best. But it was I who initiated the conversation. It was myself uh, that wanted this to take place. You felt, and I know you, you because you're a very religious man, and I respect that, you felt deep in your heart you are physical. Because I saw the interview yesterday. You feel you're physically ready to start at center, or as you said, if you want to be, if they want to use you at right guard or at one of the guard positions, so be it. Correct. It's been a long road, obviously. It's been, sure. It hasn't been easy, but uh, my faith was been tested, and there's been some things and times that I didn't know what was going to happen. But I've been given my gift back. How long I'm going to be able to use this gift, I don't know.
And frankly, it doesn't matter. It may be a year, two, three, four, maybe ten. I don't know. But as far as my career goes, the rest of my career is dedicated to showing people that, you know what, when you have faith, you work hard and you praise and you stay steadfast in your faith, anything can happen. Well, uh, this is uh, always going to be your home, and um, you'll always uh, be welcome on our show here on Sports Time Ohio, the cable home of the Browns. It's a disappointing ending, man. I got to tell you that it's disappointing for the I fans agree. and for me. I we were looking. The news yesterday was euphoric, and from that we go to this startling revelation that there's been some problems apparently, and you're going to be moving on. You know, this split up or me being fired or cut or whatever you want to call it it was something that I wanted and it was done with great respect I leave with great respect for Romeo Cornell and his staff and the players and the fans and I'm not upset at anyone it wasn't bitter it's nothing about that it's just the, it's just the time is for me to move on with my life and my career and it just wasn't a proper fit for me and I wish things could be different I wish they could be but I came here with the intent of uh, of representing Cleveland and 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 everyone that's involved with that I came here with that intent and I'm always going to do that I'm always going to do that at a high level but unfortunately it's just not going to be with the Cleveland Browns I wish I could do things over and make it better but unfortunately this is the situation that I'm in and we're in and uh, like I said I apologize to anyone that I'm offended. I think I can speak on behalf of the fans. I don't think there's a one uh, uh, that's going to call me up uh, uh, reacting to this, LaCharles. It's uh, uh, upset at you. Uh, uh, disappointed that it didn't work out, yes, but not upset at you. One final question. I'll let you go because we really appreciate you giving us this time. Had to be a very, very difficult decision um, uh, on your part and your mom uh, with the consultation. You mentioned uh, you talked to Savage. Did you also talk to Romeo Cornell? Yeah, I spoke with Romeo. And uh, it was an amicable break-off, like you said it was with Savage? Uh, yes. You know, with Romeo, our relationship is a little bit different. I have the utmost, utmost respect for Romeo. Uh, he's shown unwavering commitment and, and support to me, even when things weren't right and when other people might have felt differently. Uh, he's kind of been in my corner and I respect him for that. And uh, he's a great coach, and I wish him and the team well.